Hello! Welcome to the Integral Calculus video for Clever Linear Substitutions. My name is Professor Michael Polyuk. The intensity of this video is medium. The learning objective for this video is by the end of this video, you should be able to make clever linear substitutions in integrals. We'll start with a motivating example. How do we evaluate the integral of x times x minus 2 all raised to the 10? Now, one approach that you might take is to first expand out the polynomial x minus 2 to the 10. Well, this doesn't seem great, but if you did it, you would end up with something like this. And then once you have that, then you can use the power rule on each of them. Now, once you get to this stage, using the power rule is not so bad, but actually finding this expansion uh, sucks and requires a lot of work. So this doesn't really seem like the right approach. Let's see if we can find something simpler by first making a linear substitution. So we'll start with the same integral, and this time we'll get rid of this x minus 2. So that's going to be our main substitution, u is x minus 2. It's called a linear substitution because this is of the form mx plus b. The m is 1 and the b is minus 2. So if we make the substitution, now we have to figure out what the dx is, but that's just going to be du. And then we make the substitutions. So x minus 2 here is u, and now we have to figure out what this x is. So we're going to use our substitution to isolate for x. Adding 2 to both sides, we get u plus 2 is x. All right, now we're ready to substitute everything in. So x minus 2 becomes u, and x becomes u plus 2, and dx becomes du. Great. Now can we integrate this? Yeah, we can distribute the x plus 2, and now we have something relatively easy. We can use the power rule on each of them. We're almost finished. We have to remember that if we start off with something in terms of x, we should end with something in terms of x. So let's substitute back in the u to make it in terms of x. And there we go. This is how we solve this integral by using a linear substitution and not expanding out this whole polynomial. When you see a new tool or a new trick, it's helpful to write down what exactly the trick helped you with or what exactly the tool helped you with. So in this case, I might write, the linear substitution helped us by avoiding a large polynomial expansion. All right, let's try another example. Here we have the fraction, the integral x over x plus three. This time, we're going to free up the denominator. Again, du will be dx. And when we make the substitution, we'll get rid of the denominator. Here we, here we have dx. Now we just have to deal with this x. So let's solve for um, x on its own. So by subtracting 3 on both sides, we get u minus 3 is x. Let's make all those substitutions, and then we have this fraction. Well, what's helpful about this fraction as compared to the first one is that this one, we can break up the fraction. So this is u over u minus 3 over u, which simplifies to 1 minus 3 over u. And that's not something we could have done with this integral. This fraction doesn't break up, but this one does. And now from here, we know how to solve this. So we can look up what this is. It's the logarithm. And then again, um, we get rid of the u's because this function was originally in terms of x. So we should leave it in terms of x. There we go. So what was it about this linear substitution that helped us? Well, in this case, the linear substitution helped us to break up the fraction. Okay, let's see one more example. This one looks a lot more complicated. We've got x plus two in the numerator, x plus one squared, and x plus three squared in the denominator. This time we're gonna make a substitution that's not so obvious, but we'll see a little bit later why it's helpful. So let's let u be x plus two, 
Again, the derivative is just going to be dx. And we're going to have to substitute x plus 1 and x plus 3. So let's figure out what x plus 1 and x plus 3 are in terms of u. Well, it's u minus 1 and u plus 1. Okay, let's make the substitution. Now, how can we deal with this? Well, when we combine the denominator, we end up with this. Does that seem a little bit easier to solve? Well, I'll give you a hint. This looks like something squared and then a u du. So we can actually make a second substitution. This one won't be linear though. We'll make the substitution v equals u squared minus 1, and then dv will be 2u du. Making all the substitutions here gives us this. Does that look like an integral that you know how to solve? Well, I hope so. So I'll leave the rest for you as an exercise about putting this back in terms of x, but you can check your answer here. It's minus 1 half times 1 over x plus 2 squared minus 1 plus c. All right, here are some other exercises to test whether you're able to make clever linear substitutions. Evaluate x times the square root of x minus 2. Evaluate the integral of x times 2x plus 1 to the 4. Complete the algebra in example 3, the one we just did. The answers for 1 and 2 are down here, so you can check them later. Let's also take a moment to reflect. What are some ways that linear substitutions can be useful? When making a linear substitution u equals mx plus b, what happens to dx? Why is that helpful? Thank you very much, and have a great day.